Hi everybody, welcome back. So in today's video, am I the only one who suffers from delayed pistivity? It's like when someone does something and in the moment, like you you feel the shade, but you like, I'm gonna get them grace. I'm gonna get them grace. And then you reflect on it later and you mad because you didn't respond the way you should have responded. Oh my God. As somebody who has suffered with this for a very long time, when I saw the video, I was like, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was an overthinker. I thought I was too emotional. I thought I was reading meaning into so many things. But the actual truth is I have delayed festivity. And I'm happy that somebody put a name to it. Because English is not my first language. So I'm so happy that someone put a name to it. Because it makes sense and it puts everything into perspective. You know, I'm not crazy. I'm not mad. It's just that it takes me a while and I give people grace. I try to come from a place of understanding because as someone who has always been the black sheep, um, I try to see things from their perspective. But most of the times... Some people, it's either hate, envy, jealousy, something that they are struggling with, they project those things onto you, okay? And they blame you for being the reason why, but it has nothing to do with you, okay? It has everything to do with them, and they don't know how to handle it, okay? So they take it out on you, all right? So... When this happens, most of the time, you don't know how to, to process it. Okay, so you take a few seats back and you're like, were they trying to insult me? You know, were they coming for me? What's happening? And you're a bit confused. And then you eventually let it go. At least in my case, eventually I let it go. Only for me to meet them again and have the same situation. And when you confront them like, oh, I'm just joking. Oh, can't you take a joke? You take things too seriously, okay? It was not that deep, you know? And so then you become a bit more confused, right? And some people are good at that, all right? They'll use the whole, oh, it's a joke. Oh, yeah. And they'll even end up being the victim because you call them out for something that they did. And then now you become the extra bad person. Okay, and sometimes it's not because of hate or jealousy, but sometimes it's what you have may have said to them because some people don't know how to communicate. Okay, and when something happens or you say something to them and maybe they also have delayed festivity, right? They go back, they process it, and then they come back and try to throw shade at you. Okay, so sometimes some people come from that place as well. They're like, you know, she hurt me or she said this about me. Okay, so I'm going to get back at her. But I know deep down that it probably didn't mean much. Okay, but at the same time, it hurt their feelings. Okay, so they try to do something to make you feel the way that they felt. But anyway, let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section. I'm going to play a few of the stitches to this video and I'll be back with my thoughts at the end. Am I the only one who suffers from delayed pistivity? This is single-handedly the reason I end up ghosting people a lot. People do say shady things to me and I don't react to it in the moment. I don't address it in the moment either. But one random day, I will wake up and remember that shady thing that you did. And that is when I will decide that I actually don't want to have you in my life anymore because it spoke to your character as well as the way that you actually felt about me. So I just end up ghosting people because delayed festivity. <laughs> Am I the only one who suffers from delayed positivity? So I'm going to talk about this with my autism because I'm autistic. Not saying anybody else is. Okay, let's not make assumptions today. But like, you know, I, like many other autistic people, have struggled significantly with friendships. And so how it used to be growing up is that I would just like latch onto anybody who would, you know, be my friend. And so you can only imagine what type of people that I attracted. And so like people would say things and most of the time, especially when I was younger, like in the moment, I didn't get that they were making fun of me, using me, whatever the fuck. It would be like much later and I'd be like, hmm. And then this would happen over and over and over again until one day I would just wake up, literally wake up at a random ass time, 4 a.m. and be like, here is a list of every single thing that you've ever done that was shady or disrespectful to me that you didn't think that I knew, but I did. It's the definition of who was that in the Bad Girls Club? I don't understand. I think it was her when she was like, good morning, bitch. Yes, that's literally like how it and these people, they were awful, okay? So they deserved it. 
Like it was autistic abuse. Like that's what it really was. I don't do this now. Okay, we're, we're a changed person. But like as I got older, I used to be able to catch one a lot faster. And so, you know, you give the person a pass, you know, a pass or two here. But then, you know, I would, I would wait it out. Try to see how far they would let it go. Then let them pew pew themselves in their own foot. No big foot, no Nikki. It was, I just wanted to use that as an example. Because people try to play with me. And listen, listen to me, listen good. If you think that you're sitting there getting one over on me, honey, pray for your life. That's all I gotta say. Wait, you should have responded because this happened to me today. Literally, was just telling my husband like an hour ago how me and my kids went on a lunch date today. They didn't have school, and we was waiting on our table at the restaurant. And then um, there was finally a space for us to sit down. Sit down to these two old white ladies. As soon as I sit down, the lady says. Oh my gosh, everybody must just got new shoes because all of you guys' shoes are so clean. I'm like, at the moment, I was like, no, we have multiple pair and we take care of our shoes. But then when I sat down and I was telling my husband about it, I just got more and more pissed. I'm like, if I could go back into that moment in time, I probably would have gave that lady a piece of my mind because of what kind of comment is that? Someone does something. No, because I notice everything and I'm an overthinker. I'm hypervigilant. I know all of the above. So once I notice something like that, it doesn't matter how late it is, you're going to get cut off. And besides, I don't need friends. I need fans. It's like when someone does something. I don't know why this is, but I've been talking about it in therapy a lot. But for some strange reason, anger is not considered an emotion in like our colloquial conversations around emotions. This is not a good thing because anger is a valid emotion, right? Anger is a valid emotion because anger shows you when somebody has crossed your boundaries and or like something is triggering. I don't know how to describe it, but um, anger can be a useful tool to understand when somebody is disrespecting you, disrespecting your boundaries and when you don't like something. However, we live in a society that that deeply discourages anger, like it's seen as in as an irrational behavior act of aggression like no like we don't live in a society that encourages behavior so what ends up happening is specifically for women women suppress their anger we numb it because we are so aware that like already as women we're deemed emotional and irrational because we're women and we express ourselves in anything that is um anything that's not that's not feminine is masculine and you already know we live in a patriarchy with that said, um, a lot of women, specifically black women, we're not aware in the moments like when we're being slighted or like when we feel disrespected because we are so numb to some of the stuff that happens to us. And we are so just acutely aware of the fact that there could be serious consequences. So a lot of it is baked in as like the society we live in and then fear that we experience from retaliating or being angry or some of us like are just scared that like we're going to lose control when we're angry and i truly feel like more women need to be angry be angry at the society be angry at people like you'll get past it but anger is a is an okay justified emotion what you like i'm gonna get them great i'm the same way but here's why it's because we are learning to listen and un from an understanding place versus listening from a respond place. So when you listen to someone say something, you're processing it like, did they mean what they just said? Or am I hearing it wrong? Or am I being defensive? You're, you're thinking about how you can respond in the best possible way to make them understand that you understand what they're talking about. Everybody doesn't think like that. Some people will just spit out whatever comes out their mouth and then later say, hmm, I should have not said that. So it's better to be the person that takes it in, processes it, walks away. And then when that situation occurs again, if it does, now you have the understanding to say, hey, when you said that, what did you mean by that? I thought about it and I wasn't sure how to take that. And then you can respond however you want to respond. But that delayed passivity, keep it in your back pocket, girlfriend, because that will help you go a long way. I hope this helped. And it's just something to think about. God bless. Oh, I love the way she explained it. It makes a lot of sense. Okay. Because you are a good listener, you, you tend to sit and listen to what people have to say. And then because you're self aware, you may go home and sit down and analyze everything that was said to you. 
you know, and that's when you start sifting out the BS, okay, from the non-BS, okay, the shade from the non-shade. And then you realize, hmm, this person was trying to say something or do something to me. This person was trying to hurt me. This person was trying to bully me, okay? And then you decide what you do with that. Like some of the ladies were like, um, the moment they realize that this is like who you are, they cut you off. Yes, rightfully so. You should be able to cut people off if that's the way you feel, especially if they've shown you multiple times that they harbor some form of jealousy or envy towards you or secret hate towards you. Like, let them go. Okay, let them go. There's no need to hold on to to such friendships. Um, it's, you know, or relationship is just going to end up tearing you apart. Okay, because they're not going to change. They have their own demons that they are fighting and they still haven't realized that they have to deal with certain issues. And so they will project those insecurities onto you. Okay, so be aware of that and stay away from people like that. And also, can we normalize just going back when we realize that we may have said something to hurt someone, you know, and just apologize. Maybe you had a moment because the thing is, you know, when you have said something to hurt someone, a lot of people know some people, I know some people have verbal diarrhea when they don't think about what they say. They just blurt out things. They don't care about people's emotions and feelings. They just talk anyhow. And if you're one of those people, you have to check yourself. Yeah, if you are self-aware and you know that you do, you did not intend to hurt somebody, you know, instead of you waiting for them to come back to you and telling you what you may or may, may not have done to them, you can call them and be like, hey, sis, girlfriend, I noticed that a few days ago, you know, this and this happened and I said this. And to be honest, I'm reflecting and I realized that I shouldn't have said that to you. And so I apologize because I know I may have hurt your feelings. Okay, so we can be adult and keep it pushing. And she'll probably be like, oh, no, it's okay. Because maybe she doesn't know or maybe she knows, right? But probably she's still processing the whole situation. So you coming in there diffuses the whole thing. And so it's not going to be a cycle where someone is hurt. They go back to process it, come back and try to hurt you more. And then we are in this, you know, dance where you hurt me and I prove to you that I can hurt you some more. Like we can have healthy friendships. Okay. And we can communicate you know, and we can solve our own problems and we can save ourselves the hurt and hustle and trauma by just saying, I'm sorry. Okay. And also if you are, if you have delayed positivity, okay. And you don't know how to process, you know, the whole situation or things come back at, uh, to you in like weeks, months, years, you find yourself around people who are always throwing shade, who often come back at you and say, oh, can't you take a joke? Oh, it was just a joke and so on and so forth. Whenever you go around them, right, record the conversation. Yeah, record the conversation. And then when you go home and you process everything, you come back at them and you say, on this day, you said this and this and that. Like I've thought about it. I've processed it. And I realized that this is not the first time. Every time I raise this issue with you, you tell me I'm too emotional and I can't take a joke and so on and so forth. But when you said this to me, this is what it made me feel. Okay. And so from this time on onwards for this friendship to hold, because I do value your friendship, right? I'm going to be recording our conversations. Okay. Because I don't want you to tell me that it was not what you meant. Okay. Or you didn't say that. I don't want you to gaslight me. So I'm going to be recording our conversations. Right. And I'm going to refer you to it after I have processed it because it takes me a while to process certain situations. Okay. And see what happens. See what happens. See how the whole thing changes. See how they are on guard when they are around you. Okay. And I know someone will say, well, this is too much recording conversation. Yeah. When it comes to setting people, I believe it's okay to record them because then you know who they truly are. And if it was actually jokes or jabs, okay, because then they will be forced to behave themselves around you because they don't want to be caught on tape. Okay, but if you want to know who they are, 
Don't tell them you're recording them. Just let them keep talking and keep recording them. So when the time comes, right, <clears throat> and you tell them why you no longer want to be friends with them, you want you no longer want to continue that relationship, and they're like, oh, I didn't do anything. On this day, you said this, I recorded you. On this day, you said this, I recorded you. On that day, you said this, I recorded you. So now I know that it's a pattern. And I don't know if you have a problem with me, right if i have said or done anything to you but i i believe we should be able to communicate that but if i did anything to you to make you feel this way i'm sorry okay because i'm trying to figure out exactly what i did to you that has made you become this way towards me but i did realize that i haven't done anything to you so that means that you're harboring something against me and to be honest, I don't want to be around this situation. So thank you for your friendship, but I'm out. Okay, now they have all the evidence and you have all the evidence and they can't say, they can't say shit because they know, they are aware of how they treated you. Okay, yeah. And I feel like it should apply to relationships as well. If you have boyfriends or men in your life, girlfriends who like to gaslight you, right? And make you feel like you're crazy. Apply the same technique, okay? Record them. Keep recording them, okay? Because it, most of the time, they will gaslight you. If you say, oh, on this day, you said that. Like, Me, I never said that. I wasn't there. I didn't say this. You know, you're crazy. You're just blowing things out of record it. Who said that? Okay? People lie. They know exactly how they are treating you. They know they are being an AO towards you. But, but for whatever reason they continue doing it until you call them up yeah so be aware of that i feel seen i feel like i'm not alone i feel like i'm not crazy and i really love that this lady spoke about it okay but let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section have you ever experienced this do you go through this how do you manage it how do you process it share your tips in the comment section so we can all learn from one another this is just my opinion i'm not saying it's set in stone but for me, for my sanity, these are some of the things I had to implement in certain situations so I don't look like I'm crazy. Because people, people can make you look like you're crazy when they are actually the ones hurting you. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section. And I'll see you again with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.